Hi guys, this is Tom Cunis. I'm a senior solutions architect in Cisco's Advanced Services. In this video, we're going to show a demo of how you can construct a vSmart policy to define the SD-WAN topology. Uh, with me today, I have Zane, who's a technical marketing engineer. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, Zane. How about yourself? Good, thanks for having me. Welcome. And I also have Sakruth, who's a technical marketing engineer leader. Hi, Tom. Thank you. Happy to be here. Glad to see you. Uh, leading the demo today is Ali Shek. Um, Ali, please take it away. Thanks, Tom. What we want to look at today is changing the topology using policies. By default, this environment is currently set up such that the V edges and branch one are able to directly communicate to branch two over both possible paths. What we want to convert this into is a setup where branch one, when it needs to communicate to branch two, will have to go to the data center in order to do so. So Ali, um, one quick question. This kind of illustrates the power of vSmart where we can dictate traffic patterns because of vSmart, correct? That's correct. The vSmart is the controller through which policies are enforced in this environment. And we'll be looking at policies applied to vSmart to change the topology. And Ali, what's the use case behind this? When would you do a full mesh versus a hub and spoke topology? The different types of topologies are dictated by the type of traffic patterns in a given customer environment. In a lot of scenarios where if you have site-to-site -site traffic, that is where you would leverage a mesh. But in a lot of customer environments, all the traffic is destined between a branch location and the data centers in question. So there is no need for communication to go direct from site to site. In that type of a scenario, we usually redirect traffic in all the traffic from one branch to the data center from where it can go anywhere else. So I guess that helps with scalability as well because we reduce the number of IPsec tunnels and BFD sessions and all that. Right? That's correct. The number of tunnels in this type of an environment and the amount of routes that are propagated reduce correspondingly because the edges are only communicating with the data centers. So let's look at the vManage environment. Here we have the dashboard. Where we first want to go is the specific monitoring section. From here, we'll go to the network tab. And from this tab, we will access branch one, vEdge one. This is the device from where we'll first establish the fact that we have direct site-to-site -site communication. Once we're at branch one, the first thing we want to look at is the tunnel layout. Looking at the tunnel distribution here, what we want to highlight is the fact this device is currently able to build all the different tunnels to all the different endpoints. What I'm currently going to highlight is the fact that we have direct tunnels from branch one over both MPLS and internet to branch two over MPLS and internet, demonstrating that we have direct site-to-site -site tunnels established in this environment. From here, we go next to the troubleshooting section. Where we will leverage the ability to do trace routes to see that our traffic goes directly from site to site. So I'm going to use a specific known IP address that is located at the remote branch within a given specific VPN using a specific source interface at this site. So we're actually simulating a user trace route. This is from the service LAN source to a service LAN destination. That's correct? exactly right. We are sending traffic at the second location at branch two within a specific network segment from a specific LAN interface in branch one. And this also illustrates a segmentation where VPN 10 and VPN 20 might be That's segmented. Correct. You're right. All the different network segments may have different topologies. Here for this demo, we're looking at the specific network segment VPN 10. 
each network segment could have a potentially different topology. So let's issue the command. And what we'll see is the packet, the trace, is one hop away. The packet is able to get to its destination within one hop. This demonstrates that from branch one to branch two, I can get there directly. So now let's go to the policy page and change this topology. This is located under configuration, policies. We'll access the policy menu, and here we have predefined the policies that we'll use. The policy for this demo that we want to leverage is the one called strict hub and spoke, where we will convert this mesh environment into a hub and spoke topology. Since the policy is already defined, what I will first do is go to the menu option and activate this. <clears throat> By activating this, this policy will be sent to the vSmarts and propagated in the system. So just to highlight, the button that we'll use is the activation button. Here, this menu pops up that tells me that this policy will be activated and will be sent to the following vSmarts. And since the vSmarts are both full mesh, they'll both get the policy information that we're configuring here. That's correct. The vManage is in communication with all vSmarts, and the vManage will ensure that all the vSmarts are in sync and receive the same policy. So let's activate this. As the policy gets activated, vManage is going to make sure that the policy is sent to both vSmarts and that it is synced across both of them. We're going to refresh the page using the refresh button here if we want to expedite how quickly the page reloads. And we see that the page is refreshed, the policy has been successfully propagated to both controllers. So going back to the topology page, we want to remember this is what the initial connectivity model was. We expect that these tunnels will go away and that when we do the trace, the traffic goes from this site to the data center in order to get to branch two. So again, following the same method, what we want to do is first go to the monitor section. Within monitor, we will access the network section. Within the network page, we will access again branch one from where we had done our first test to verify that our policy changes have been successful. Again, once on branch one, we first want to look at the tunnel layout. And what we'll see now is that the tunnel that was between branch one over MPLS and internet towards branch two is no longer up. That tunnel has been withdrawn. If this tunnel was supposed to be operational and wasn't working, you would see a down arrow denoting that the tunnel is supposed to be up but has gone down. In this situation, what you see is just a blank line to show this tunnel used to be up but by directive has been withdrawn from the system. Next. We'll go to the troubleshooting section, and we'll leverage the same trace route capability to now look at what the pathing looks like for the same kind of trace. Again, we'll specify the same destination that we'd used in our original test within the same network segment 
using the same source interface that we, we, we had used in the previous test. Let's run the test. And what we now see is that an additional hop has arrived in the system, which means this traffic that's sourced from branch 1 in order to get to branch 2 must go to this intermediate point, which based on our topology is the hub site. So we're able to see that the policy has delivered the results that we wanted. Now let's look at what the policy construct looks like. How did we define the changes required to make this happen? So where we'll go is again to the configuration section. Policies. And look at this hub and spoke policy as to how it is enforcing the behavior that we want. So what I'm going to do now is go into the edit view for this policy. This policy layout is a centralized configuration policy. And from here, I'm seeing the policy application section. What is being applied in the system? And the thing of relevance to me right now is the fact that I was manipulating the topology. The topology was being manipulated to create this hub and spoke environment. And this directive was sent to the branches. So in my application section, that is when I want to enforce the policy, I tell the system, change the topology into a hub and spoke environment and enforce it for all the branches. One, one big component is the relevance or the importance of site IDs. We can apply these policies based on the site IDs. That's correct. What you'll notice is the application target is a site list. These site lists are reference pointers to groupings of site IDs. This could be an individual site, or it could be a collection of site sites. So this is the page where we're applying the policy. So I had a question. The, the hub and spoke all VPN, that's just a, um, a name that you gave it, right? That's exactly right. This is just some human readable naming convention that you can have for your policies. So for the purpose of this demo, this is what we've named it. This could be named anything you desire. So where exactly is the logic <clears throat> that we're creating the, the policy that does the filtering of T-locks and routes? That's a great question. This policy is where the logic is. So let's look at where that's defined. Since this is manipulating the topology, it's going to be in the topology section. So let's go there. In my topology section, I identify the policy that is here. The type of policy that it is, is a custom control policy. And it's important to remember, control policies are what change topologies. So this is where, under the topology section, I have the policy that I was using and the type it is, a control policy. Let's look into it further to see how I'm constructing the parameters by which the tunnels disappeared and that my path changed. We'll go to the view section here. and look at this specific policy. So as you can see, here's the name for my policy, which in this case is hub and spoke all VPN. Again, could be anything else. The description for this policy, that is, I'm creating a BFD topology as hub and spoke for all VPNs. Again, an arbitrary description so that whoever is looking at this can easily understand what's happening. Then we look at the conditions. What is it that we're doing? The first rule says 
allow DC T locks. Okay, what does that mean? First, I see here, this tells me I'm changing the T lock. I named it allow DC T locks. And what I'm doing with it is for all data centers, I'm accepting the T lock. As a result of this, data center tunnels are permitted. This rule, just this rule, is specifying manipulate the T-lock for the data centers and permit it. So as we expected from the topology, our tunnels to the data centers are operational. Let's look at the next rule. Deny all other T-locks. What is that doing? Again, the first thing it does is manipulate the T-locks. The name I gave it was deny all other T-locks. I specified no match condition. That is, match everything else. From the previous rule, you'll remember I was matching the data centers. Here, I'm saying match anything else. As a result, if you're a branch, a spoke, if you are not classified as a data center, you fall in this category. And the action that I take is reject. As a result, the resulting behavior is branch to branch tunnel denied. So I've permitted tunnels to data center. Now I have denied tunnels directly between branches. What's the next step that I'm doing as part of this policy? This says, deny corpnet branch routes. As a result of this rule, what I'm doing is changing the routes in my routing table and specifying that for all branches, reject the routes. As a result, from the perspective of a branch, the only routes it will receive are the ones from the data centers. So as a result, it will either follow the default route or an aggregate or a summary, but it will not receive any routes from other branches. So what I've done is, first, I manipulated my T-locks and my tunnels. And now I'm manipulating my routes. And the first rule that I've set is deny branch to branch routes. What's the final rule set that I have? It says, routes PCI set next hop. Now, as you'll know, within this topology in this environment, there are a number of different segments. For a certain set of segments, I'm forcing the branches to set their next hop to be the data center. That is, for the PCI segment, or this could apply to any segment, for that traffic, all routes must point to the data center. As a result of the combination of this, I've allowed only data center tunnels. I've denied branch to branch tunnels. I've denied branch to branch routes. And I have forced any other network segment to point to the data center. In the strictest, strictest sense, my topology is now a fixed hub-and-spoke environment. 
where all my tunnels go to the data center, all my routes point to the data center, and I receive no route or tunnel information for other branches. So the PCI VPN, you've actually rewritten the next hop, where initially it was the T-lock of a branch, the vSmart is rewriting the next hop to be the data center. That's exactly right. Prior to the policy, a branch could have, within the PCI segment, gone to another branch. Through this policy, it is forced to go to the data center. Even if, by any chance, it receives some other route, all of its patterns now point towards the data center. So this forces branch to DC communication. So branches will still have all the routes for the other branches, just that their next hop will appear to be the hub. So in this particular case, this is an additional measure in that because of the previous rule, we had blocked routes in the corporate segment. In this one, we are for the PCI forcing traffic to the data center. So at all times, no matter what segment you're in, all of your traffic must go to the data center. So the corporate rule, it could, you could actually use that to deny. If you don't announce a default route or an aggregate route, you could actually use that policy to deny branch to branch traffic. That's indeed. exactly right. And you can start seeing from here as well that I could start having custom topologies and custom rules on a per segment basis. For the purposes of this demo, we want to turn everything into hub and spoke, strictly hub and spoke. Right, so to highlight that point, we could say VPN 10, for example, is hub and spoke, but VPN 20 may not be. That's exactly right. We can start manipulating different network segments to have different rules on how to route traffic. And that pretty much concludes the demo of how policies are constructed and how tunnels and routes are manipulated to yield the results that we want. Back to you, Tom. Thanks, Ali. And, uh, Ali, what's the default action there? That's a good question. The default action is supposed to refer to what do I do if nothing satisfies these rules? Do I permit the traffic or do I deny the traffic? Now, in this particular policy, we've allowed the default to stay, you know, if I haven't explicitly defined what to do with it, permit that action. Again, this could be a more restrictive rule where I could say, if I haven't explicitly authorized something, reject it. So again, you have very granular control in terms of what your topology behavior should be. Am I more permissive or am I more restrictive in how my topology is constructed? So essentially, in this case, you could have allowed the DC routes and taken out your deny all uh, other T logs, deny corporate branch and change the default action to reject. It would have yielded the same result, right? That's true. Depending on how you choose to approach constructing your policy, you will find that there are a number of ways to achieve similar results depending on how you plan out your topology. In this particular case, this policy is written in the format of this is a permissive network, but we want to explicitly control and restrict certain behavior. You could choose to flip the logic and define a restrictive network and only explicitly permit things. And so it comes down to design questions in terms of how you choose to approach writing the policy. You will achieve the same results, just the method may vary. So Ali, what we are looking here is the policy definition. And when we go back to the previous slide, we saw policy application. And when we apply the policy, we can apply it in inbound direction or outbound direction. What's the difference between inbound and outbound direction? That's a good question. Here, you're correct. We were looking at where we define this topology and what that policy framework looks like. In the policy application section is where we define that this policy that we have already written out to whom does it get applied? So in this case, we're applying it to the branches. And you called out direction. What does direction mean? Direction, in this particular scenario, is from the perspective of the vSmart. The vSmart is the central controller that is either receiving information from an edge device, that is the in direction, 
And the vSmart is the one that is telling things to the vEdge, which is the out direction. So similar to classical route maps, when you have the direction inbound or outbound, this is the same concept, where the vSmart, as the central controller, is receiving data from the vEdge, where you could apply an inbound policy. Or when the vSmart is telling vEdges, you could have an outbound policy. Now, in this scenario, what we want to have happen is the vSmart tell the vEdges what they are supposed to receive, who they are allowed to talk to. So the vSmart in the out direction sends information to the branches. Now, you could achieve similar things in a different direction. You could write restrictive policies on the inbound that is refused to even receive an update from certain edge devices. And in which case, you would write an in-direction-based policy and say something like towards branches. And the policy could be something else. Instead of hub and spoke, it could be something like deny XYZ. Right. So as you can see, based on this model, you can choose to apply policies in different places. And they could be either more permissive or they could be more restrictive. And you can achieve the topology goals in that manner. To illustrate the <clears throat> inbound outbound concept, can we look at the topology and seeing how that inbound outbound is being actually illustrated? So if we look at the topology view, the concept is still the same. This is where your controllers reside. This edge device, as an example, is sending information to the controllers. Should we choose to apply a policy here, that would be in the in direction, because that is inbound to the vSmart. When the vSmart wants to send something to the vEdge, that's in the out direction. And that is where you could also apply a policy. So you'll see, similar to classical route maps, you have the ability to define a policy map in a particular direction. Great. Back to you, Tom. Thanks, Ali. Gentlemen, any other questions for Ali? No. That's great. pretty clear, huh? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ali. So I, I think uh, this was a great uh, demonstration of a vSmart centralized policy where we can affect the topology of a uh, SD-WAN network. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for tuning in.